I'm going to go ahead and rotate along the yaw axis until it is uh, until the molars look square uh, with the Z axis at least or at least get it close and then I'm going to save the file um, the reason I'm doing that is because the the uh, Windows 3D Builder it doesn't seem to let me it doesn't reset the axis after every rotation so if you rotate it right now uh, for print orientation it's going to mess up so I do this operation first then I close the file I go ahead and reopen it again and it will reopen in the saved orientation uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the file once with my left button in 3d builder you're gonna use your left button to rotate and uh, we're gonna go ahead and go over here so we can look at it from the side angle I'm gonna hit the rotate and then I'm going to change I believe the pitch next we we changed the yaw now we're gonna change the pitch to uh, a 45 degree angle or in this case 135 and now I'm going to now that I've done that I'm going to lift it up now I use this little lift key lift arrow and I'm gonna ro lift it up to there and that's 19.55 um, Windows 3D Builder has this weird thing where it measures the Z not by the mount uh, from the bottom to the platform but it's measuring it from the middle of the model to the platform is how uh, 3D Builder handles that so anyway what I need to do is add six millimeters to this give or take so 19.5 so we're gonna call this um, 25.5 that's adding six millimeters I'm going to hit accept and that's going to raise it up about six millimeters. This is just what's worked for me um, to insert the uh, VUBASE 5. And now we're going to get to the VUBASE 5 next. So I'm going to go ahead and um, you would normally hit insert, add, and then you would look for, you can hit load object here um, and load up the file. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop it from another window. Here we go. And so what you'll see is the import box come up. Yes, I want to import it. Version 5 has two rows of spikes here, of support spikes here. They are, they kind of look like Crayola crayon tips, if anything. Uh, and these support spikes are designed to be extra thick. They are about uh, three millimeters in diameter at the bottom. And they are about one, one and a half at the top. And so... That gives you a nice fat uh, surface area uh, to contact with. I'm going to go ahead and overlay it onto the model. So I'm going to go ahead and use the arrows here. We're going to center it with the other one. If you if you are careful, you will notice that the uh, it snaps right when it hits the center of the other model. There'll be a there'll be a little stutter. So left button rotates, right button in 3D Builder translates. Now I'm going to go ahead and look at it from the side view here and what I'm going to do now is just slide it until the Crayola crayon is right in the middle of the bottom of the model. You can see there the lowest tangent of the model is right there so we want to center our spike right there. That way we get minimum print defects. Um, you'll notice here that there is more um, there's more uh, Face this way than that way I probably need to reverse that so I'm gonna go here I'm gonna go ahead and click rotate here again and we're gonna go ahead and rotate this along the yaw axis they're using um, aircraft aviation uh, language for that and now we're gonna go ahead and go back to this view or this uh, direction here and we're gonna translate our mo our uh, thing here and then we're gonna look and what I'm looking for is to see if my spikes are correctly um, superimposed in it. And you can see there's a lot of spikes that aren't touching. So maybe my translation was a little bit too high. I'm going to click this model now. I'm going to unclick that one using my right button. And I'm going to lower it down until it is until it is correctly centered. So here we go. We're going to lower that, drop that down. You can see it kind of, actually it snapped for me. So there was probably some sort of, centering that went on there and this isn't perfect but it will print um, you can raise or lower this depending on how much engagement you get I will tell you that the fatter the contact area between 
these spikes and the print, the more reliable your print will be. Um, you'll notice that I have shorter spikes in the middle and longer spikes at the side, the periphery, and that's intentional because uh, your night guard will tend to be lower in the middle. And so what we're going to do is go like this, um, and I'm going to check again. The thing I want to check for is to see, make sure that there are no spikes in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the x-ray feature here. Uh, we're not going to do it on that one, though. We want to x-ray this one. And you can see there that x-ray allows me to see through the model. We want to look at the intaglio here of the the intaglio of your night guard and make sure that the spikes aren't aren't uh, into the intaglio. If they are, that's going to be bad news because those spikes will then go ahead and cause your night guard not to fit. And what you can do here is if you don't like what you see, you can go ahead and raise the uh, you can raise your night guard up and down to fit. Double check with the X-ray view again. Um, you can actually X-ray both of them, and you can see there there is no uh, superimposition. This is going to be more true of my mandibular splints, which is how I prefer to do it. With upper splints, you're going to have to be more careful because the edge of the night guard will be closer to the intaglio. Uh, so be aware of that. I'm going to go ahead and try to. I'm going to save this. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and rename it as Night Guard B. Leonard, which is my patient's name. And we're going to call it um, Boo Base 5 STL. And we're going to also pick STL format. Make sure you pick STL format. That way you are assured that your Rayware slicer can understand it. And I am using Rayware. Uh, I have. Um, that installed on my machine so I'm gonna click on that next so we're gonna save this file um, yeah dire warnings that's okay STL is understood so we're gonna go back to here on our my rayware and you'll notice on my rayware that I have some stowaways this is actually a uh, this is actually an action figure uh, that I'm printing out on uh, printing out as a side project. So we're going to leave him here because I want to make another copy of him. We're going to go ahead and put this night guard on the... We're going to drag and drop this night guard into the um, system. So I'm going to drag and drop from my Windows Explorer. You could also use the Add button here. That works as well. Okay, and so we have uh, a consolidated print right here. You can see I just one thing you can double check double check your intaglios make sure that you don't have any uh, pegs sticking out here if it is it'll ruin your night guard real quick um, and I have this ready to go I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and hit this thing hit make sure you're on the print tab uh, make sure that you have the correct resin picked um, I've only verified this with sprint ray night guard flux I've tried similar things with uh, Keystone Keysoft splint I love the material it works all day long with Vubase 4, which is the one with just the ball sticking up and not the Crayola spikes here. Um, Crayola crayon sticking out. So I know for sure this this uh, system, this uh, Vubase 5, will work with Night Guard Flex. It is a hardier, more resilient material, and therefore it will tolerate a wider range of shear stresses when printing. The Keystone Keysplint Soft is a more translucent material. Uh, they put in less photo initiator so that it looks closer to clear um, and less purple. And because of that trade-off, uh, making it look more aesthetically pleasing, of uh, being less uh, purple, uh, it doesn't seem to cure as strong between layers during initial cure. And so I think that is why you're getting, I you get you'll get a print fail. Uh, doing this print method. Maybe you won't. I don't know. I haven't tried it. I have Sprint Ray Night Guard Flex in my printer now. Uh, I think it's pretty much going to live in that tank because honestly, I like the material. Anyway, you can hit print at this point and uh, print it. If you want to make sure that your um, splint fits, you can go ahead and click once on it with the left button. In Rayware, the middle mouse button is what will translate your view and the right button rotates. Yes, every single program has a different scheme. You can click on the 
scale button here, the crop tool, click on space, and then click on the one of the circles to make sure it's based. I already know it is. One thing you can do also in Rayware, if you'd like, is hit print preview, uh, hit generate preview, and then what you'll see here, what you want to see in this print preview uh, when it comes up is a uh, full view of your, you can see there on that first layer, the entire uh, raft is visible. That's what you want to see. If you see something like this or just a partial one on the first layer, you're not good. You want to make sure you see the full raft. That means you're going to get maximum adhesion there, okay? Um, I think this pretty much sums up the tutorial. Um, I hope you guys found that useful. I'm going to go ahead and load up my raft with a, uh, load up my printer with a few more things uh, before I start this batch off. Uh, Thank you for watching and uh, keep printing. Take care.